We have been looking at ESPN.com's rankings of different positions based on uh, front office, executive, coaches, rankings. Uh, everybody kind of votes on it. So uh, today the tight ends. Uh, top tight end, George Kittle, second. Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller's third. Mark Andrews, fourth. TJ Hawkinson, young guy from the Lions, is fifth. Austin Hooper was an honorable mention. And um, we have an NFC scout who said this about Hooper. Solid and dependable, good hands, limits mistakes. Great for the Browns offense, not a guy who takes you out of your game plan. So um, as you look at that, that description to me, Doug, kind of says, it's kind of like when somebody tells you, yeah, there's this girl and she's got a great personality I want you to meet. People have said that about me. <laughs> that's that's how I was introduced to uh, on dates. Oh, this guy's he talks a lot. Um, so listen, I do think we judge Austin Hooper by his contract, and he's not as good as his contract, right? Whatever, ten million a year, whatever it is. But they had to get a tight end for Kevin Stefanski. Harrison Bryant was a rookie. You weren't sure what you had in David and Joku. Like, they had to do that. So if you try to constantly judge Austin Hooper by his contract, you're going to be disappointed because he's whatever rank in salary, and he's not that rank in ability. So what they said about Hooper, he never is going to be, like, more than, like, the fourth best option on the field, you know, behind Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, and Nick Chubb. So he does. you don't have to change your game plan for Austin Hooper. That's okay. So I, I, they, but as much as he at times feels replaceable, if you didn't have him, all of a sudden you could very quickly start feeling like, hey, Kevin Stefanski doesn't have the tight ends he needs. So somebody was going to get that tight end money for the Brown from the Browns with the cap space they had, with the, the need they had. But on the list of like meaningless things that Kevin Stefanski might want to accomplish this year, way under win the Super Bowl, to have a Browns tight end be in the top 10 on that list a year from now I'm sure Kevin Stefanski wants a top 10 tight end and he wants to give somebody an opportunity to prove they they deserve to be that and be ranked that way so maybe that could be Hooper this year maybe it could be David and Joku but I think you know in an ideal world Kevin Stefanski wants a guy who who does make defenses you know change their plan but I don't think they have to have Austin Hooper do that like in order to win the Super Bowl this year. The other thing I would say is that tight end and quarterback getting to know each other, the, the second sense, sixth sense, whatever you want to call it, I think that probably suffered more than most last year with no preseason, no training camp, none of that. So, so I would expect Hooper and Baker Mayfield to develop a little bit of a, a better chemistry given that they're going to go through, you know, training camp and, and those kind of things this year. I think that that hurt um, Austin Hooper probably as much as anybody with Baker Mayfield last year. No, I think that makes sense. I mean, the reason everybody talks about Rashard Higgins and every time we talk about him is because, like, oh, he and Baker are on the same page. He and Baker are on the same page. And, like, there are other guys on this roster, you know, Odell Beckham still, Austin Hooper, who just haven't had the chance to really, to really do that yet. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just – you know, the, the Falcons really used Hooper in a specific way and I think kind of inflated his stats a little bit. And He was good. You know, he got opportunities and he was good. But sometimes you got to do this. Like, I think the Browns probably knew they were overpaying him, right? Like, they were, fingers crossed, he's a top 10 guy, but you just, you just kind of had to do that in the moment. And then once you get your roster set, then you don't have to reach. Because early on, when Andrew Barry's coming in and you have a new coach, like, hey, we got to get some guys that fit what we're doing now. Because before, we weren't building to this. Now, once they're built to the Andrew Barry, Kevin Stefanski specifications, you don't wind up doing that anymore. Because you're going to draft guys, and you're going to do other things that you have a constant plan. And maybe Harrison Bryant is the most likely guy on this roster to make a top 10 tight end list someday. But Hooper, in that moment, they had to do what they did, and I get it.